So uh, what we did, uh, we, we talked about the multiplication rule, remember? We did the addition rule, there is another one. We call it multiplication rule, okay? So I think it's section 4.3. So I just write it down, then check the, the section later, okay? Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's a multiplication rule. So what is going to be, can you see, it should be all right, uh, multiplication. Multiplication, multiplication rule. With the addition rule, we took care of the probability of, okay, we took care of the probability of A or B. In this case, we are very much interested in the, just bring something ahead. Okay, in this case, we are going to be interested in probability of A and B, okay? So we're going to be interested in probability of probability of A and B. Or in symbolic form, is going to be or probability of A intersect with B. It's going to be the probability that both C A and B occurring. In that case, it's going to be probability of A and B. In order to do it, it's going to be more involved than the addition that we did. First, we are going to go with a special case. That special case is going to be related to the events that we are going to call them independent events. Uh, two events are going to be independent if probability of uh, one of them occurring, nothing to do with the other one. You see, for example, you toss a coin and you get a head and then you are going to roll a die and you get a six. For the first part, the probability is 50%. And for the second part, probability would be one out of six. So you're not going to be, your action, the first action is not going to be affected, you know, the, the second one. So we call them independent. In everyday life, for example, uh, consider the events that, uh, that you get a raise in your salary and then you buy a new car. So these two events are going to be depend on each other. Because if you don't get the, you know, if you get the raise, the probability that buying a new car is going to be much, much higher. So uh, this is, in the case of the independent events are going to be the best one. The formula is easy to apply. And later on, most of them would be independent. One. So give it the definition first, okay? So what is going to be independent events? You get quite a lot in your book. And the examples. So what is going to be independent events? Two events that nothing to do with each other. We are going to call it independent events. So two events. Two events, A and B. A and B are going to be called the independent okay independent events it's going to be independent events okay if uh, the probability of one of them if uh, the fact that we get the A, okay, the fact that A occurs, nothing to do, does not affect, okay, does not, does not affect the, the likelihood or the probability, the chance of getting B, the probability of the event B occurring. Okay, the probability of getting A, nothing to do with the probability of, you know, getting, getting the B here. And so uh, otherwise, if the events are not going to be dependent, we are going to call them independent, dependent. Otherwise, Otherwise, A and B, A and B are going to be dependent events. Dep 
dependent events. Okay, so this is the situation that we are we are going to have. Any question? Give me some examples. I'll give you the examples that we are going to use in the coming, you know, coming problems or the coming test. Identify which one is going to be a crucial one. Example, the, you know, the popular one is going to be two events like the one that I talk about it. So the first one, this is going to be using your books. So this is one of those that you have to know it. So the situation is going to be rolling a die. Okay, rolling a die. And uh, getting a six. And getting six a spot, if you like, a six. Okay, and then, and the second action is uh, tossing a coin. Okay, tossing a coin. Tossing a coin and getting a hit. And uh, getting, okay, getting a hit. As you can see, the, the first action is not going to be changing the second one. I mean, you roll the die, you get a six. So the probability is one out of six. Then the second action is you're tossing a coin. Tossing a coin and getting a hit. The probability would be always 50%. So whether you get the first one or the, you are not going to get a second, the, whether you get the first one or not, the probability of the second action is always 50%. So in that case, these events are going to be independent events. Okay, so this is going to be independent, independent, independent events, or the events are independent. Okay, any question? So give you another one. Okay, I'll go with the same one. So we go to the number two. What's going to be the, the number two? The number two is like, you know, that's for fun. The one that you have in your book. So getting a raise in your salary. Or they getting, getting a raise in your salary and purchasing a new car. Purchasing, okay, a new car. You see, these two events are very much depend on each other. So you are going to buy a new car if you get a raise in your salary. So if this, the first one is not going to be happening, so the, the probability of getting the second one would be very much changed. So in this case, these two events are going to be dependent. Okay, so this is going to be, in this case, we are going to have a dependent event. Dependent, dependent events. The other one in your assignment is having a, having a good GPA and be qualifying for a scholarship. That would be, again, a dependent one. Okay, you have one in your book that they said having a large shoe size and having a, you know, having a high IQ. In that case, you know, this is going to be nothing to do with each other. This is just for fun. Any question? Now, the most important example is this third one. It's the one that you're going to use it for a couple of problems in your next test. So what's going to be this one? This one is going to be, let me write it down, then explain it. We are going to draw a card from a deck Okay, the, this type of procedure is view. Let me write it down. See, the raw, the right, the right, a card 
drawing a card from a deck, ordinary deck, from a deck, and getting, okay, and getting, let's say, uh, getting a king. Okay, so you draw a card from the deck, and you just know that to see whether you hit a king or not. Then what you are going to do, you see this expression is the one you want to know. Replacing it, okay? Replacing it, this expression they are going to use for these type of problems. Replacing it. So you have two choices, because you want to go and get another one. You may keep it, or you may return it, or replace it. In this case, you are going to replace it. So. If you know it, then you replace it, and then you do it again. And then, okay, and then what you're going to do is then drawing another card. Okay, drawing a second card. Drawing a second card. And getting a king again. Getting a king. You see this one? You did it with the replacement. You return it. So as you know that the probability of getting the first one, the probability of getting a king for the first time is going to be 4 out of 52, or 1, of, or one over 13. If you replace it, it, means you didn't change the game. And you go for the second one, the probability of second one would be also 4 out of Okay, 4 out of 52 in this case. So you didn't change the game. The probability stayed the same. Nothing to do with each other. So in this case, these events are going to be independent again. Okay? But there is another case. The other case that you are going to be given is without replacement. Without replacement means you get the first one. You have a look. It's a king. So you like it. You keep it for yourself. Then you go to the second part. If you go to the second part, the probability of getting a king again is going to be what? You reduce the number of the card from the 52 to 51. So the total one is 51. Besides, you reduce one of the king because you kept the king. So the probability of the first one is five. Is going to be four out of 52. The probability of second one would be three out of 51. So in the second case, these uh, events are going to be dependent. So if you do it with replacement, you see, with replacement events, these are going to be uh, independent, independent, independent events, because you return it, you see, you replace it. But when the problem would be given to you, they, the problem will have two parts. Then there is going to be a second part. I gave you the second type. So the second part they are you are going to be asked is oh repeat number three. Repeat number three, but this time but without replacement. So these expressions you have to know it. Do it again, but without a replacement or re replacing. Okay, with replacing or without. When you is going to be without, then they ask you, you know, then find the, uh, okay. Repeat, uh, but without replacing the first card. The first, the first card. As we talk about it, if you keep, if you don't replace it, you're going to keep the card for yourself. So you, 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 you did change the game because the number of the card would be one less and the probability would be quite different. So the first action would affect the second action in this case. Okay, so in this case, this is going to be dependent events. And we are, that's why we have to have two different formulas for the, okay, for the multiplication, for the and probability. One of them would be dependent, the other one would be independent. Okay, any question? So you pay attention to this example and you will see it when we create the, the situation they're going to have.
In probability, when we go on, we are going to arrange it so that always we get independent events. Why? Because of the next formula that we are going to have. So we are going to check the probability of A and B first, where, when the events are going to be independent. That's much, much easier. And then we create the second one. Okay, any question? So make sure you understand these events. And you have a list in your book that they ask you to identify whether the event is going to be dependent or independent. So we are ready to give you a formula for the multiplication rule. Very important formula for this section, okay? So what is going to be multiplication? Multiplication. Multiplication rule or formula? Formula for what? For independent events. Independent events. For the dependent, the situation will be different. So the, the events are going to be independent. It's very easy. This is a formula if you imagine you the science, they use it quite a lot over there. And this uh, type of ideas, and this is going to be the case that if uh, A and B are going to be are independent, okay, are going to be independent events, okay, independent events, then you have a nice formula. Then the probability of A and B is simply equal to the probability of A times that by the probability of B. That's it. Or, in the symbolic form that I prefer, probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times it by probability of B. Very easy formula. We call it the product rule. Okay, and this is going to be the one when we extend uh, other part of the probability. We arrange it so that we always have this formula, which is much, much easier. Because this is just two events. In future, you may have A, B, C, D, E, F, Okay, a number of the events, always we can change it to the product right away. Okay, so it's going to be first case. Any question? So quickly, some examples for this one. You quite a lot in your assignment, and they are going to be easy examples because it's just one formula. Okay, this is it, the one that we talk about it, a coin. Okay, a coin is flipped. A coin is flipped, and a die, and a die is rolled to action. Okay, so what do we want? We want to find the probability, find the probability, find the probability of getting Okay, probability of getting, getting what? Getting a head. Getting a head on the coin. A head on the coin and, and uh, a four on the die. Four on the, on the die. See, that's going to be a very typical problem. So you read it carefully, it's a combination of two events, and they use the AND combination here, so you know that it's going to be probability of A and B. The first event is getting a head on the coin, so we are going to call this one A. And the second event is getting a four on the die, B. You have to give us a formula, remember, for this type of problem. So the solution is going to be we are interested in the probability of A and B. That's it. We check to see what sort of events do you have. Are the events independent or not? As we can see, that these events are going to be independent. The probability of getting a coin is 50%, and probability of getting a die is always getting a four on the die is one over six. 
So we are going to mention it at the events. Okay, the events are independent because we are going to have the other voice as well. Dependent. And so we are going to use the special case of the product rule. Probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times that by probability of B. Okay, any question? Now, substitute, very easy to substitute together, is going to be equal to, what is A? Getting a, okay, getting a hand on the coin. You know that probability is 50%, it's the one hand. That's going to be the first one. And the second one is getting a four on the die, is one out of six. Okay, one out of six. So you multiply them together, that give you one to half. So probability of A and B, okay, probability of A and B simply would be one to half, and then you that. Any question? So that would be interesting, interesting case. Okay, any question? Now this next one is the famous one that you are going to see it in your next practice one, take on one. There's going to be two parts to this problem. I'm going to explain it to you, just a, a preview for the uh, dependent events. It's the one that we talk about, I read it carefully. It's, it's a card is drawn. You see a card is drawn from a deck of cards. Okay, from a deck, from a deck. And, and, look at this one, and replaced. Replaced means you didn't take it. You didn't keep it for yourself, just return it. Replaced a second. Replaced a second card is drawn. Second card is drawn. As we can see, this is with a replacement, if you like. As soon as we see the replacement, we talk about it. The events are going to be independent. So what they ask, they are going to ask you find the probability. Find the probability. And find the probability of getting. Okay, getting a queen. Getting a queen, and then getting a queen, and then a king. This is the situation we have. Okay, we draw the first card. We draw the first card, and then we replace it. We have a look, and we replace it. Whatever it is, then we go over the second one. So, what's the probability of getting a queen? on the first one and the king on the second one. Since you replace it, you didn't change the game. In both cases, the sum of the cards gonna be 52. So these events are gonna be, okay. So again, probability of getting a queen, we call it A. Getting a king, we call it B. Since it is a with replacement solution, you explain it that the events are the events. Okay, events are what? Are independent. Independent. Okay, so we can use the product rule. I'm going to go to the next page. Are you done? Okay, the events are going to be independent. So the formula for the event is going to be, you get the probability of A and B is simply probability of A times it by probability of B. You see, that's going to be the case. Probability of A getting a queen is four out of 52. But you replace it and now you get the second one. Since you replace it for the second part, again, the total number is 52. And you want to get the king. 
and the privilege of getting a king is going to be four. Okay, you simplify this. You can simplify by one and thirteen. One thirteen. So that give me one over sixty one over one sixty nine. So in this case we will have A intersect B would be one over hundred and sixty nine. That would be the probability. Any question? Now, the preview for the next part is going to be, as you see, suppose you want to do the same problem. Suppose you want to repeat, you know, repeat the previous problem. Repeat the, uh, repeat the previous problem that we have. Repeat the problem if you like. Okay, then with the with the first card, first card is not going to be see is not. It's not to return, if you like, or it's not replaced. It's not replaced. So we want to do it without replacement. Without a replacement or replacing. Okay, so what does it mean? This means you take the first card. Remember, you are looking for the queen. When it's the queen, you keep it for yourself. Then you go to the second part and you do the second action. You change the game because you kept one of the card. So when you go to the second part, the probability of getting a king is not going to be four out of 52 because you reduce it. So in this case, you have to note that the events, okay, the events are dependent. Okay, we are going to give you a formula to find that. But uh, you can do this one with the information that we have, then we explain the formula for you. You see, in this case, the situation is going to be that you get the probability of A and B. The probability of A and B. I'm not writing the formula because it's not like a product, but it's a similar. Probability of the first one, you see, it was four out of 52. For the, okay, for getting a queen. But you keep the queen, you go to the second part. When you go to the second part, so the total number that you have is 51. But you want to get a king, that will be four out of 51. So the situation will be different. The formula will be different. And we are going to give you that formula. But if you want to do it as is, this is going to be the case. You can use your calculator and find these numbers, okay, 16. You can simplify this one, it's gonna be one over 13. Okay, so the top would be something like four over 13 times 51, I don't have the number. Let's give you an idea of what is going to be, okay, what is, uh, is going to be uh, the next one. So <clears throat> what we have to do, we have to modify our formula. Modify the formula to be able to take care of that one. But uh, in order to do it, uh, we have to go through, we have to generalize the formula, generalize the idea. In order to get the idea in between, we stop, we stop and we create a new formula first and then we get the result. Uh, the condition you see this is going to be, you get the first one, but in order to get the second one, something else has already happened. And that's the case that you kept one of the card. So uh, in, in this format, we are going to define something, we call it conditional probability. Okay, conditional probability, then we go for it. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to define it because I'm not going to be able to finish it. That's not only fine. So I stop here, because I have to be there at 12. So this is called conditional probability. I write it down so I know that I did this one. So we we defined what is the condition of already what would happen, the formula, how we're going to change it, and then eventually we give you the multiplication rule. Okay, it's going to be a very easy one. 
And this is easy too, because they have to tell you that this is condition proof. That would be enough for today. That's all I can do for today, okay? So I continue this one and we take care of it uh, later. And that's it. Any question? Everybody submit the quiz. That's it. So have a good one and uh, see you on, that's it, you on Thursday. Yes, that's going to be the one. So we take care of the condition of probability and we finish this chapter on, on Thursday. After that, uh, this classic probability would be changed. We give you a notion of the function type. We try to do it on, on Thursday. Okay, have a good one and take care. Bye-bye. This one.